Gigi. Yeah, there were some nice uh, connections there with those uh, Banelings, but that didn't really matter. Uh, there was just too much for Classic right there. Yeah, all right. So it, I've gotten no feedback on uh, the technical issues, which I'm assuming means they're all solved, which is great. That means we can go into the next game and all of you are here to watch StarCraft and not watch uh, some kind of uh, pause screen as we jerk around. So... Whoa, 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 whoa. It was a circle jerk. It was an individual. <laughs> Let's be honest, guys. It was a circle jerk. Just game... Just to oh, remind oh, you, you were going to justify it. I you were no, no, no. I'm going to switch the uh, switch the conversational topic in order to get you guys to go to the Matarino page, which we have for these two players. We've got uh, Sue, which is van a fantastic player. We've got Classic. We've got a fantastic player. And if you guys were to go there using the code balls, I forgot the code. Somebody in chat will tell you the code. Yeah, yeah, if you use balls, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. But and trust me, it's gonna work. Yes. Uh, somebody put that in there. One of them is the gathering. The other one's something uh, the else. The other is I forgot. crap, crap. The other, yeah, one is the, the gathering. You can check that out. You can add a free dollar. Yeah. And the other one had something at the end of it. Let me really quickly get that. Yeah. But that's if you want to have somebody else donate your money. If you want to donate your own money, like Classic or Sue, is worth it. <laughs> or if you like getting interviews at the end of this, if you get a certain goal, uh... we will have an interview with these guys and we will ask them questions. That means we had to hire a translator. Uh, so we're taking a small part of the money uh, for this uh for this event and we invest it into future ones so from the last one the need versus scarlet we're investing into this one and uh this uh if we get any extra money here we may invest it into a translator so we can actually promise uh deliver on the promises we told you of getting interviews but we have a little bit of a uh, way to go before we get to that for now we have whirlwind here we are in the bottom left-hand corner. The Red Zerg player, it is Sue. Sue, two, two at equal score with the player on the northwestern side. It's Classic. Now, Classic, after that next uh, last game where on the two-player map he went with uh, the early Nexus, now, on a four-player map, you can really do that, but he's just saying, like, no. Yeah, uh, a slight bit of mind game, hoping that Sue will be greedy and he can punish it. And simultaneously, game one, we took really decisively, and the last game, where he was very aggressive, have all came out of these slightly greedy Sue builds and very aggressive classic builds where he's been able to punish and rack up horrendous drone counts. So I like this. Of course, it will come down to a little bit of star sense and a little bit of if we see Sue send links to the middle to take the Zelnog on classic sees that or if classic can pick up the overlords. There's a very small dice roll here. And if it goes in classic's favor, he can punish Sue like he did last game. Maybe not quite as severely, but definitely well. I'm sorry. Did you just say star sense? Star Sense. Star Sense. Go get that app, guys. Uh, the 66 to 33. Sue to Classic uh, with the wrong colors this time, but that's okay. I'm sure you guys can read. Uh, not looking the case. Not looking uh, quite that dramatic. Uh, it is 2 to 2. So Classic very much capable of holding his own against this very, very formidable player. Mm-hmm. Classic does identify Sue's position, and thankfully for Sue, he's not opened up quite as gritty as game four, or maybe that was game five right before I know that was game four. Sue will go for that quick third hatch, though. He's on Lang Tech, and really, with the first two adepts, if you can shut them down, if you can stop the initial push with your queens, you can put yourself into a nice position. But as we saw in last game, his one queen is simply not able to deal with the adept, and we'll see if he can remedy his control from last game. Two adepts straight up into Sue's main, while Sue automatically pulls the drones, and Classic is getting damage done, whether or not he kills too much right here. Oh, he's actually going for an engage with those drones. No, sort of not. Uh, sort of struggling. He doesn't quite know how he wants to deal with these guys as they go back into the natural. Oh, 
Those drones earning their keep right there. I believe that was a yeah. drone that got the last. Yep, there you go. And a classic deciding to get on out of there. Does get that second drone though. But two I'm... Adepts versus two drones. Yeah. I'm impressed with Sue not making a lot of lings to deal with that. He was very careful. You're at a, he's at a very low drone, or check that larva count at this point. And it's a little bit iffy whether or not that was worth it, but I not, not whether it was worth it for Classic, but whether it was worth it for Sue, because he did end up pulling his drones a lot, and if we see Classic go for a second attack quickly, he can try to punish Sue because Sue did waste a couple, or pardon me, didn't waste a couple rounds, but did pull his units away a couple times. Mm -hmm. so a little bit of lost mining time, a little bit low on drones, and does scout that Twilight Council, which is very nice. And at the meantime, putting in this Overlord right here, which scouts the complete absence of stuff, which is actually accurate there's nothing here yeah the twilight council is at the front and i'm pretty sure sue knows about that yeah, he has scouted that so we can assume it is going to be another resonating glaives push with that sue will respond with the baneling nest and primarily on that interesting thing about this series so far is we've seen a lot of tier one play from protoss while not so much from zerg this final time we do see a little more tier one based play from zerg sue going baneling link mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, worked very well for him in the first game where he went for the heavy melee uh, build and yeah, decides to get on back in there. And with those adepts not shading in right away, he is going to have enough time for those things to finish. Ooh. Are they actually going Depths to be the main? Nope. Adepts ought to be careful about getting on a creep, but looks like they're just going to head up towards the third base. Simultaneously, they shade into Sue's natural base, and they're going to be able to just jump out of the Banelings. Banelings do hit, injuring a lot of these Adepts, but they are looking for a prime position between the mineral fields if they can get that. Sue's drones and his main base are pulled. There's only the Queen trying to do damage because the Lings are anticipating that the Adepts will shade once again back down between the natural and the third base. This is starting to look like it will be cleaned up. Classic has killed three workers in Sue as long as he's figures out the tech he wants to move into is putting himself into a good position right here. Population-wise, he's forced out a lot of lanes, a lot of rain lanes, so he wants to move across the map and do some damage right here while he doesn't need to worry about, or for a little while until he needs to worry about the worker count of Classic, which is still about even to him. He has an opportunity of a few minutes. Will he utilize it? Yeah, very nicely uh, anticipated there by Sue, catching those adepts on the shade out. Uh, and if he's at all, because he does have vision does scout that third base being taken as well might just say you know what i have time let's put in 10 drones 10 drones yeah. sounds about right and, right now and i really love that he's playing it safe he's trying to make sure his economy is okay while he pushes and he's utilizing what he's had to make earlier in the game he didn't want to make those lings he wanted to keep droning up but he's able to actually move across the map on a bigger map it's scarier but still is able to move across the map and try to punish the natural the third he knows he can't move into the natural base or maybe he thinks he can but instead he's going to jump into that third base and since he's instantly we only see one foot on overcharge though the lings could try to commit but they don't really have any upgrades for now because plus one is only starting on the way and they will pull back at least they put pressure on classic and will gain map control as you can see at the moment sue has multiple bases covered and the zelnaga yep sue's so seeing absolutely everything and his opponent completely in the dark everything outside of 10 distance whatever the official oh, distance successful. unit is in starcraft outside of his bases he doesn't know just now putting up that uh, pylon at the bottom of his base making sure that if there are any drops coming his way and i wouldn't put it past sue to uh, to think yeah. that huh he would know phoenix play yeah Classic will move into this Phoenix play, which is going to be interesting versus Hydra Lurker, or at least Hydra Baneling Ling. Yes, you can pick up the Lurkers, but you ideally want Robotics Facility units to complement, or check that, you want the Phoenix to complement Robotics Facility units. Oh, it looks like Sue's going to try to take an angle. He could get a surround on these Adepts when the Sentries weren't quite there yet, but for now they're going to fall back, keep a constant pressure on Classic, while Classic is going to try to put on some pressure to Sue. It looks like we only have the one Spore and one Queen, so not a lot of anti-air, but 16 Hydras are just about to pop, and not only that, but they do, of course, have Hydra speed and range. A lot of 16 Hydras would or will, make absolutely, it will in a moment. Yep, uh, would make absolute mincemeat of these uh, Phoenixes, but as they only come out three per hatchery or so, you don't want to get them in there because they will get lifted up and then shredded. 
Light units, as they are, they take extra damage from the iron cannons of the, the phoenixes, and you have to be careful about that stuff. Now, with the third base having been taken for uh, Classic a little while ago, and now fully saturated, I'm... On the one hand, I understand, but on the other hand, why not have taken a fourth yet? This uh, map, very hard to keep a fourth, though. As mm -hmm. I say that, I must be nearly as good as Sue. Mm -hmm. Sue so is just fourth. waiting, trying to get up to a little bit better of a tech tree. Classic scouts into Sue's main base, starts to get some of these workers on gas, which is going to be fantastic, but already a horrendous number. 20 Hydralisks have been made. Classic is going to dance between the natural and the third base for a while. Sue knows this and automatically transfers his Hydras out, but once he gets a key number, he will be able to split them up between those. And already Classic is losing a couple of Phoenixes. He needs to be careful. Very nice transfuse on that Queen there, keeping it alive midair. Can't do anything useful, but queens are good meat shields, and it was uh, performing that role very admirably. Now, what is Classic thinking of doing after these phoenixes? He's not building Storm. phoenixes anymore. I like it. Storms. Yep. It's a very interesting transition mid-game to go to the phoenixes, but I, I like the storm play. For Classic, he needs to be careful on a super wide open map, though. He's not going to have choke points or as many to storm, so he will generally be relying off a little bit more of a defensive posture to utilize these. Alright, apparently I need to be a little bit louder, so I put the uh, Dreadnought cut down, which is what everybody wants anyway, but you can put your volume a little bit up and the sound balance oh, a bit. Oh! Nice so right on the army, Sue has to pull back, he needs to be very careful. There's a number of sentries and Classic has got himself spread out completely, lots of storms too, beautiful force field. Bailings do get on the left hand side though, and they're gonna go for the High Templars and look to move into the mineral line. At the same time on the right hand side, some Zelts are going to be coming on in, but charge is not done yet, and there weren't that many more uh, storms that came down. If Sue can get a nice wide open angle, he should be able to take a fight in this moment, but after pulling back, it's given classic time to rewarp in a number of units, get more High Templars out, and buy himself a little bit more time to finally have Storm plus some of the DPS that comes out of the charge lots. Yeah, he's still got a couple of uh, High Templars right here, but they don't have any energy. So he needs Sue to stay back, and uh, Sue's not staying back. Sue's dividing uh, the forces of Classic. Look at this, very nice. Both armies staying exactly where they are. But well, Classic the Twilight's going to be sniped. There is no charge. That's so important. That's a key part of Classic's composition right now. Sue oh, moving and with Sue just a little bit so of an patient. army. Keeping the rest of his army right there for that surround. So and here and now we, we go. A couple oh. good storms, yeah. but there's no meat shield. There's no zealots in front of that army to keep the banelings back. Oh. Looks like Sue is going to take game five. Three to two. All right. Very, very nicely done right there. Moving those positions in there. And a classic had to respond. He got uh, Sue got those units right between the second and third. And they were, you know, chipping away at everything on the top of the ramp. And some of the stuff at the bottom. And it was, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you know, classic had to move in. And uh, Sue just had so much waiting there for just that position. And classic moved in there and there was a full what was that 180 surround just merged on in there and those banelings just fucking murdered it all right one last thing well one last thing who, uh, who am i kidding oh by the way drenok you called three two congratulations <laughs> i called three two in a best of five though so we have a little <laughs> bit different right here Sue is showing me up fantastically. Classic has been fighting, but I know as people in the chat said, it's really a great timing from Sue. He found a really nice angle, went in. I loved how he played in that game. I love how he yeah. played in that last game. And I like the style he was allowed to go for. And he was allowed to go for that style, which is something he's tried to do in games one. In pretty much all the games, he was trying to get up to... Not necessarily he was trying to, but in a lot of them, he had postured himself to move into a Hydra Bane Ling Ling style. But each time Classic got into him early and damaged him where he was never, never able to hit the timings he needed to. But last in that last game, Whirlwind, it was a big enough map where he was able to hit those timings and fight with the correct composition.